Good morning, and welcome to our next happy installment of this unofficial video series. Um, a lot happening today. Um, show you. Um, you hear ladies in the background, and uh, right there, and yes, including them, all of our ladies right here. You see they're standing in line over here uh, waiting to get in the nesting box because we only have six of them. You know, and they all have their favorite. But this Thursday, I believe. Yep, there they are. This Thursday was their one-year birthday. They are all one year old and they all made it. There we go. Oh, look at that. You want to say hi? Hello. Yep. So they all made it through their one year old first year alive and they're all doing good. Um, the first thing too today, um, I was talking to someone at work and they said you know, part of the problem they would love to do a garden but they have, they live in an apartment. Um, so um, I kind of thought today, if you watch this Amber, I'm um, uh, um, these planters are the Bountiful Harvest Planters. Um, these are perfect for uh, patios or balconies or whatever. And uh, this is the result right here of where our cherry tomato plants are. Um, if you can see right here, they are easily a foot over our deck right now and doing fine. They are... Um, uh, each hold about, we put about three tomato plants in here, and they are branching out like you wouldn't believe. They all have blossoms. So, this these are usually my preferred planter, and I'd like to add on to them more and more with this, and we'll end up putting these other pots next year up in the main garden. So, that's a good solution. Another solution, too, in that for, like, uh, small greens are these planters right here and you know save your money too by going to some of the planter stores if you can get there right off the bat the Dollar Tree actually has these for a dollar per unit like one of these right here just one layer a dollar which um, uh, online they usually go for about 30 bucks for a set but for three dollars you have right there and that is nine planting areas right there and they do work too. Um, uh, um, it doesn't. Uh, you can barely see, but this little line down here is actually a small water reservoir, so that the water will come out if it gets too heavy. So it, that does help too with uh, overwatering too much. But as you can see on our cherry tomatoes, um, uh, here we have plenty of blossoms coming on there, and um, we have our first ones actually right here coming on but uh the way these are set up the bountiful harvest if you really look they um are doing a phenomenal job on there you cannot overwater them and they also have uh, a little uh spout on each side so they hold about three and a half gallons each and anything else will fall right off. Okay, now this is not in the garden yet, but my lovely wife um, decided to decorate with some of the new statuary and other things she had. So, first one is she put one of her chickens in up by the chives. So, that's a nice little home where she put right there. And these chives over here are doing fantastic. My daughter transplanted them this year. And they're about uh, how these looked last year when we transplanted. And we found out we have a rogue uh, raspberry bush here. So that's a little bonus. And the young ones decided to transplant some chives themselves, and 
Well, they're still holding on, so that's all good. So anyway, I'm about to go into the garden here, and um, this is nice because it's probably been a good week and a half before there was any footage, and there's such a noticeable difference. One of the more things, this is our recent bed, um, uh, and yeah, ignore the weeds. Um, last week there wasn't too many, too many of anything in here. These are all new fava bean plants coming up right here. And the ones around the teepee are some more snap peas. As you can see right here, these are starting to produce pretty good. And these are fantastic the sugar lace snap peas. Um, one thing about this Fleet Farm soil too, um, you can see the Brussels sprouts are doing fantastic. And the cucumbers are just really taking off. And she put another chicken in there too, so. So right about there. And those right there are the okra plants, and I know they take, they seem like they don't grow, they are growing. Um, one thing I've learned about okra, it is a southern uh, plant, so it does require heat. It does, it can grow well, but, um, and I've seen uh, one posting online of a lady who's concerned because they're only that tall after a month, and these are actually about... A month or month and a half and um, uh, um, direct seed sown so it's a little bit different but um, it will take off it you gotta have patience on it I mean that's all I can really say you know right here are um, patty pan squashes starting to really take off as well and hopefully you'll get on to the arch um, these are some other okras that are doing a little bit better too in that so um, they've gotten their secondary and third leaves. Um, the bean plants, uh, she put some bush beans in a plant here, planter here, and over and back, and those are all doing fantastic. And what we did, um, uh, this is our herb garden. Yeah, ignore the weeds. I know it's bad, but oh well. And uh, right here along the cage, the pole beans are taken off, or snap peas are taken off really well. So this whole wall sh thing should be uh, covered in another month or so, hopefully. Um, the one thing um, uh, with, with raised gardens and what I learned too in different soils is some of them are, they can look good one day, bad the next, good the next, and it's, it's not, you know, it's not worth a... Uh, the headache in that if the plant's gonna live it's gonna live like these these look terrible in heat last uh, last week I mean again beautiful greenery um if we get up here uh, they all got nice colors on them and I'm sure if it gets too hot they will uh, fail um, this right here actually was some mint from last year if I'm not mistaken, so we got some good wild ones splitting up. Uh, the pineapple sage, um, these bloomed awesome last year, and uh, they look like they're doing good. They're spreading out really nice. And um, our root beer plants have some flowers now, so there's a little bonus. Over here, I'm on another one of my uh, Father's Day gifts, a little alien there. So he's hiding out there. <clears throat> um, right here, um, I cannot say enough words about how my wife uh, did this uh, garden right here, and she's was look, talking about possibly putting perennials in next year. These are all annuals, but she did a fantastic job filling them up. Um, 
the giant mustard. Now this is about a month old, and this makes fantastic green for a salad. If you want um, a really good salad leaf, I would recommend this. It's the red giant mustard, and it's total days, total time it takes is about 46 days. Now another one is, uh, and it's getting a little big here, is arugula. And uh, it's still pretty soft right there. I go, it can get really hard, but I mean, hard after it gets old, but not as bad as kale, which who the hell eats kale anyway? But uh, th those are all good and very easy to grow herbs for, or leaf vegetables for salads. And the kids love them too, by the way. Yeah, moving right along, we got the beets are starting to get a little bit better. Get some more body to them, so hopefully those will be ready to pull soon. And after that, we are going to uh, do some major overhauling in this bed. Another one of my Father's Day gifts, the gnome saying hello. And the other one guarding uh, the pot here. Um, we did get some nice growth on our rhubarb too as well. So, And yeah, I know it's terrible weeding, but it is what it is. Um, and moving over here, we got the broccoli. Yeah, some went to seed. But these are, now these tomatoes were labeled as Amish paste and we got these when we went up to the Amish about a month and a half ago and um, it's it's strange because a lot of them look like they're wilted but they're actually doing pretty good and they bounce up and down so much that it's hard to tell this is the first time we ever seen these tomatoes but if you look right here the you know they're blossoming like crazy and there you can kind of see out back there too um, the flowers are huge as far as tomatoes go, so they are all producing. Now this one back here, you know, right here's already got tomatoes started down there. And some more blossoms will kind of get down there and see right there. But, and wow, I missed this one. So this is an Amish paste tomato, looks kind of like aroma. You look real close down there. So that's a nice little surprise here. We uh, didn't even see it, and I don't think anybody's seen it in there. And whoa, again, a couple more down here. Where did I see them? There they are. There they are. So these, yes, I'm... I am very happy with these plants, and I think these are going to be real nice, and I think this is going to be one of our preferred ones right here. If they're producing this early, I mean, there's that's a no-brainer. And these things were, and these are plants all in here, and mind you, this is probably the crappiest soil we have, and we'll be amending it. So, realistically, that's um, a bonus like you wouldn't believe. So I think this is going to be a good one. We've got to put in the books for next year. Um, if we can get rid of the damn chipmunks. And now you can see the strawberries are doing fantastic. And uh, right over here was our purchase of a cross for the middle of the beds right here. And what's nice about that is if you can step over on the other side, it is reversible. So there is two different designs in there. Most likely what we're going to be doing down here or in the garden at the end of the year is putting our garlic in, but that's going to be a little bit in the future. Okay, moving over here for other tomatoes. Uh, I was unsure what happened to the early girls in that, but some are doing good, some are <coughs> not so good, but I mean, 
what's amazing by doing it this size is the, the size of the stalks. I mean, they are fantastic and healthy. And on here, you can see the okra here. They've gotten a little bit bigger. Another ro rogue chicken. And then to sneak through here. Now these little things are called basket of fire peppers. And they only get, these were the ones that only get 12 inches tall. And it's really nice to see them getting bigger. And taking on a little bit of color in that. But a lot of them are actually near the height and now they're starting to branch out. They were about this size for the pepper chili chili ones and I didn't care for them so I don't think we're going to get there too much next year. You can see we do have some peppers started on here. These uh, are the <clears throat> Hungarian sweet peppers. They're kind of, they look like a banana pepper. But they are actually uh, only get about four inches tall, and that's about it. And then we got some bell peppers started here, coming out nice. Use a little bit higher height on the plants, but that's okay. And over here are some uh, more of our tomatoes starting, and we get a few down here. Now this was actually start. What I'm going to show you next is uh, our bean pole, pole bean plants, and this is exactly what I was talking about that I wanted to happen. And within a week or so, these really ballooned up. So that cage we put in made out of the old, the old one. Well, it served its purpose. So right here, we got all the plants starting to vine up right now on there, all the way down. As a matter of fact, they're fighting with some of the tomatoes and that, so we had to unscrew some, but yep, a lot of them are at the top of the cage. We even got one right here going over the top to get up. Ooh, actually we got two of them. And I think this one's the winner down here. <coughs> so. Um, some of the bush beans did come up, but they only didn't like it for some reason. And over here on this side, not all of them did, but we had about four or five different kinds, too. <coughs> and right here's the fava bean starting. And that's about where that is so far. So over here we got our pumpkins and our squash is doing real good. These were all the rogue pumpkins that came down and the thing is huge. We got some nice squash blossoms coming up here. So yes, life has been good in here. Clear out some of the garden here and again right here is our cantaloupe plant and we are getting blossoms on there as well. What I'm really curious about is our blue Hubbard squash coming up there in that row. And oh my god, this is a mess. Rhubarb really going to seed here. Things taller than me. And there are two plants, the watermelons, are still hanging on. They're going, taking a little time, which might not be a bad thing. So we don't have too many coming in at once. And these two plant, watermelon plants 
have been doing fantastic. As you can see, these were about that size not too long ago. And again, we got those at the Amish place. So, you know, regardless what you may think of how they live their life, I'll tell you what, they do know how to grow. As you can see here too, we got a lot of weeds in our garden and realistically, you know, that's the difference between raised gardens and not having them. But we also believe in utilizing everything we have. I mean, we're blessed with this area. We've been jump, dumping a lot of chicken manure, so hey, the weeds are enjoying just as much as the plants. I mean, take a good look at, on this view of the big pumpkin plant right there. I mean... That's, that's huge. That's actually four plants right there in that little group. And they all grew back wild. Um, even down here, it's starting to vine out and flower a little bit. So, um, this is one of the biggest successes we've had. Was with these four by three foot ones that we put the strawberries in. We added two more near the end of uh, building all these and added a cage. And I have, we did our research on companion plants. And for those just starting, whether it's a patio garden or something like this or a regular garden, I'm going to give a shout out to an um, app for your phone. It's called From Seed to Spoon. It's free and it is full of information video shortcuts there's a section on pests and you can go in and you select your plant and then you go to the top of the screen and hit friends and that will give you all plants that are friendly for them the other plants to a uh, companion plant with to utilize your space now one thing that we have okra sporadically around is because there's one thing there's a lot of there's a lot of plants that don't grow well together but okra I'll tell you what there's not too many things that won't grow next to it. But uh, getting back to the beds, this is um, this is one of our better successes right here to where we actually harvested about a half a pound of uh, snow peas for a stir fry the other day. Or a ma yeah, mammoth snow peas. And uh, in one four by three foot area, we have probably eight eggplant. We have dill from seed. And this is a month ago that she planted this, so I mean, wow, kudos. That's, you can't get that much better in about a month, month and a half. Um, the eggplant, as I said, eight of them, uh, they're starting, they're blossoming good. Um, uh, so they should be growing soon. You see right there. We're talking 10 to 12 blossoms on here. Now this is after about two harvests right here. Of, uh, of snow peas off of 13 plants. So I mean, as you can see, they're going really awesome. And what happens is, if you notice, the white flowers are where they start growing, but once they start having a pea, the flower, like right here, I try and find, will actually turn green. So kind of get a close up right there. So that's kind of interesting to know right there. And on the other side, by the alien, another one, we have a row of fava beans. And these things, I've learned, um, have to go. You have to trim the seeds off, uh, off, and hopefully it's not too late. These are the daikon radishes. I did pull one, see how big they got, and even in here, the it wasn't too thick yet. At 30 days but the root was actually about nine inches and they are very spicy at that stage so we've never grown them before so hopefully we'll they'll mellow out um, over here again this is another type of ochre right here you see the leaves are going much more pronounced um, now these right here um, these I did get at a uh, 
Stein's Garden and Gifts, and I gotta say I'm kind of disappointed because not all of the plants did well from there. But the pepper plants, these are the Long Hots peppers. <clears throat> and kind of like banana pepper, but uh, maybe about 10 inches long. But I gotta say, for the size of the plants, you know, of, you know, they're, I mean, well, look at right here. That one's about six inches right there, so that one's almost mature. There's another one growing there. We got a couple down there off three plants. We got four plant, four peppers growing on this plant right now. And we even got a couple more started up there. Um, the habaneros are not produced yet, but there's still time, but they have been growing good. Um, my other ones, well, I haven't seen any yet, but I want to leave the Trinidad scorpions alone, uh, um, as well as the Carolina reaper plants right here. But you know, the chocolate scorpions, we've already got one going right there, and that is exactly how they're supposed to look. It is not wilted. That is how they look. And here's another one here. Um, what will happen is they'll be one to three inches long and they have like a little scorpion tail, which is why they call them scorpions, I guess. Um, as far as the Carolina Reapers go, plenty of blossoms on here. So... Hopefully those will be producing soon. And you kind of look around. Um, over here again, more okra. For want of a better term, we don't want to waste anything. Um, our raspberries are starting to do good. As well as a lot of our blueberries. There's some more of our peppers down here. Um, so far, sweet bananas haven't been doing too good. Um, getting more and more of the bell peppers. Um, aromas, they are starting to produce, as you can see, which is kind of nice. Um, and over here, you can see some of the cucumbers starting right there. And these four plants are chock full of them, so <coughs> yeah, think of our research where we got them because these are doing fantastic, and these will be on the menu for next year. Last year when we did our Brussels sprouts, we put them in the, put them in another garden area, but it was shaded. So a lesson learned: they love the sun. Um, you can see right there they're starting to get some height up, which is good. And get some thickness. And our corn experiment. What happened is we probably had some bad seed the first time. And the second time, little bastard chipmunks or rabbits got a hold of them. Small ones as they go. Well, it's too late to start, so we filled it up anyway. I mean, so we made an unscheduled trip to Steins and said, well, let's add a few other things, so put three ghost pepper plants in there and this is a wasted space I know but it's better than nothing and a lot of these are experiments for us so it is what it is and we had a couple more eggplant down here and some yellow neck squash we got three plants so hopefully that should be enough right there as you can see the flowers are really opening them up in there um, this is the difference in soil. The okra is still growing, but not as big, so this might even be wasted space, and we may even do some damage to this right here and plant some beets or another month or so if it don't go. Um, this is the backside of all those vines growing up, and uh, we got our first one. It's called Pepper Fooled You, and what these are, these are jalapeno look-alike peppers without the heat. And uh, these right here, um, again, steins. Um, I don't understand it because, you know, some of the, these are not looking too good here. And these are supposed to be an heirloom variety. And right here, 
is the same company, the Indigo Rose Tomato, which is a purple one. And these things are blossoming like no tomorrow, and we even got our first one started right here. Come on. I'm terrible with the phone. There we are. So, I do not know what's up with that. Um, these were the burpee uh, um, jalapeno gigante. Big jalapenos in English. But I'll tell you what, they're not a bad size either. Um, again, the Romas, a lot of them were getting some good, good uh, starter tomatoes on them. So all in all, we did a good. We did. We did. Um, uh, we're starting to see the rewards of the labor, so to speak. <clears throat> the one thing I've noticed too in that is, especially to an um, I'm going to give you a bonus mini rant today because you get some people that I've dealt with and it's like, well, we don't have this or we don't have that or we don't have the time. And usually, I'll tell you what, this was probably about, if I had to guess over a year of putting away, buying a little bit at a time, maybe $1,500 for every single thing, including the prep plants and the original price of the old greenhouse. The trash and since throwing it away and recycling it for 10 cents on the 10 cents worth of our scrap we repurposed it so what we've done here yeah i'm very proud of but these people who complain you know and you know especially in today's society it's, it's not fair well i'll tell you what let's take a look at this one of these raised beds here the ones with all the uh um, eggplant, dill, okay, I bought that, well, somebody bought a bottle of frickin' Jack, same price, okay, the one with all the radishes, that was a price of two or three cases of beer, okay, it's called priorities, um, again, this entire fence, Going about 300 feet around the whole area. That's what you probably. That's what a lot of these people probably paid just going out to eat. The seeds, a freaking soda. A lot of these great plants and pepper plants. I bought two of them where so one person paid five dollars for a cup of coffee at Starbucks instead of buying. A can for five bucks and making a thousand of them at home. So, realistically, you know, it comes down to priorities of what you want to do. Um, this is a family project. It's here to serve a purpose and feed the family. And, you know, it takes work. If people are... People can have the best gardening of everything and have the best of the best. But you know something? If you're unwilling to work or unwilling to keep at it, you're not going to have it. And, you know, it's more than growing, too. It's, um, it's where you can actually sit there and have a place of peace away from everybody. Which should be a good reminder when you hear people say, well, if something happens catastrophic, I'm going to come live off of you. And, you know, and honestly, that's where I draw the line. Because most people I know who say that to me are lazy, they don't want to work, and all they do is consume. And they want something that I work for. So, when it comes to that, hey, you know, there's no one to blame but ourselves in that one. I don't like paying taxes so someone else can have a better phone than I can have. 
I don't enjoy at times having to feed my family processed foods so our tax can go give some idiot in the ghetto organic. I don't enjoy working overtime to have a little extras to build something like this so my taxes can go and sit there and have some someone have free tattoos on the comp, on the tax dollar. And I'm not against tattoos, okay? I want that to be perfectly clear. Okay, I'm not against what people choose to do to their bodies. What I am against is when my taxes have to pay for it and those people refuse to work. And something like this garden in these times is more important than anything. Because if they'll screw with you on Black Friday, and there's people sitting there stealing all the toilet paper over a stupid little flu bug going around that they dubbed as a pandemic, what's going to happen when something really bad happens? And that's the only thing you do. And you know, honestly... When that when that's said in this context, most of us know this whole pandemic crap and race riots is far from over. Okay? So that being said and done, if all you're going to do is continue to live the same lifestyle and not better yourself, well, the blame falls back on yourself I guess I go I've worked too hard in my life for what I have um I've had blessings of a awesome wife who shares the same views that I do and the same vision and not everything's perfect but guess what we are a team that's all it seems to matter in that we are in control of what we were blessed with and the old saying too use it or lose it because I can guarantee I go this is why I'm not out at the beach laying around doing nothing and then whining I don't have nothing this is what this is why I have this because I'm out investing in our world Versus taking the money that I work for and throwing it away on junk food. And there's nothing wrong with junk food. There's nothing wrong with treats. And there's nothing wrong with a lot of that. <clears throat> but the key is in moderation. And if you can afford it, more power to you. <clears throat> but if you're unwilling to sit there and make your life better when you have the opportunity. And you don't do nothing. Well, it comes back on you. So, well, that's about it for a rant for right now. I'm off. Well, you know, something else might pee me off ever, so you never know. I might get a little few bonus videos in there. We'll have to see. So, everybody have a good day, and we will talk to you later. And just remember, anything is possible if someone's going to be willing to do the work. Because what I seen two months, two, three months ago, when this is a field of overgrown weeds, and an expensive part of the lawn to upkeep, that's, makes it all worthwhile. And then a final thing about that too, as far as keeping upkeep of lawn, This whole thing at one time was a court, roughly a quarter acre of space. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. I don't know. But consider this right here. Total cost to light this area at night, which hopefully I'll be able to get some footage on if I quit falling asleep. Is all solar. There is no heating bill. We have well out here, so there is no water bill. It's not one area to mow, so gas, the wear and tear on your equipment, zero, absolute zero. If I have to bring a small rototiller in here for every year, I will be lucky if I will need a half gallon of gas to redo the to rework the area. 
So that brings down the whole bills to two dollars. Something to really think about. How much you spend on your lawns? How much you spend on, you know, trying to upkeep, controlling the gra crab grass, adding chemicals so it sparkles and shines? And for what? So you can cultivate a nice crop of weeds to give you allergies? Nah, that's not exactly for me. So, I'm going to get going down there, so everybody have an awesome day, and we will see you next time.